the greatest, but very popular Prime Minister of Pakistan. We have many things to discuss, uh, military and terrorism and trade, and I think we're going to spend a lot of time talking about trade because we do very little trade with Pakistan compared to what we could be doing and should be doing when our countries really get along perfectly, and I think we're having that start. We're going to have that start. But there's tremendous upside with respect to trade. Uh, one of the things we're going to be discussing, too, is hostages. Uh, perhaps the polio vaccine, because Pakistan is one of the countries, and uh, we'll talk about that as to, you know, what the feeling is on that. Uh, but we have a situation in Pakistan where we want to talk about the polio or the possible polio vaccine. And uh, I think we can have great meetings. We're going to be spending a long time together. We have our representatives meeting right after we're finished, and uh, we just came out. Mr. Prime Minister, with tremendous economic numbers for the United States, the best we've ever had. We've got the best economy we've ever had. And I think we can shift some of that over to Pakistan. We should be doing tremendous business together. So I look forward to it. And it is an honor to have you. Yes, Prime Minister, how do you call me, please? Well, I've been looking forward to this meeting since uh, I assumed office as uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan. I mean, the United States is vital for, for Pakistan. We have links which have gone back since uh, Pakistan became independent. Uh, you know, we've been uh, fighting wars together. First, uh, Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Pakistan was a frontline state allied to the U.S. in the beginning of the war on terror, which was after 9-11. So, I look back to my conversation. Mr. President, Pakistan and the Pakistan has been their allies for 14 years in the Afghan war. So, face terrorism, face economic disaster, and all that, and still we are we were taken to the court with the, all the acquisitions that Pakistan is not a responsible state. Now, while, while India has, India and U.S. has developed an alliance in the region, how, you know, you plan to, you know, foresight about the past-U.S. relationship, how they can be strengthened when those presence in India, number one, and secondly, you know, after your campaign, what kind of promises? I will say that we have a very good relationship with India. I know that your relationship is strained a little bit, maybe a lot. But we will be uh, talking about India as a very big part of our conversation today. And I think maybe if we can help intercede, do whatever we have to do. But I think it's something that can be brought back together. And we'll also be talking about Afghanistan. We've uh, reduced our number of troops there by quite a bit. Uh, we are continuing to reduce uh, troops in Afghanistan. We're working with Pakistan and others on getting the agreement signed, as you know. And uh, we'll see what happens. But we will be talking about India and Afghanistan very much soon. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, had a relationship with North Korea to build their commercial wireless network. Have you been briefed on that? Do you have concerns? I know all about it. I know all about it. Huawei, I know all about uh, 5G, and uh, we're working on it, and we have companies that are now getting very, very strong in that. They have this, and we're going to have 5G. We're going to have the best 5G in the world, just like we have everything else. Our silicon, Silicon Valley cannot be competed with. Uh, there's nobody that can compete with Silicon Valley for the brain power for what we do. And nobody was focused on 5G, but now they are. And we have great companies going into 5G. Even if they don't want it to, a lot of them are very happy doing what they were doing. But now they're going at my request, they're going into 5G. So yeah, we, don't need, we don't need anything from anybody. Do you have additional concerns about North Korea? Oh, maybe down there. North Korea. What? The Post is reporting about Huawei's relationship with North Korea. Well, we'll have to find out. Our, our relationship with North Korea has been very good. We've uh, really established a good relationship with Kim Jong-un. I have personally. Uh, there's no rocket testing. There's no missile testing. We're getting our remains back. We've got our hostages back. And we have a very, very good relationship, the two of us, and that's very important. There's been no nuclear testing. And what they're doing with 5G will be, uh, you know, you will have to do. I, I'll have to be there. Say it again. Say it again.
Pakistan. Lindsay Graham, when we met Imran Khan, he says, we both are kind of same personalities. You are the president who fulfills all your promises. We do. And he's saying that Imran Khan, he's also fulfilling all promises. So how do you see this meeting? Like, same kind of person, straight to the point. Well, I think we're going to have a great meeting today. I know it's an important meeting. I consider this a very important meeting because I think we haven't met the potential of either country. I think uh, the potential with Pakistan and likewise the opposite way. I think uh, we have not even come close to meeting it. There is tremendous potential between our country and Pakistan. I think Pakistan is going to help us out uh, to extricate ourselves. We're like policemen. We're not fighting the war. We want to fight a war. In Afghanistan and win it. I could win that war in a week. I just don't want to kill 10 million people. Does that make sense to you? I don't want to kill 10 million people. I have plans on Afghanistan that if I wanted to win that war, Afghanistan would be wiped off the face of the earth. It would be gone. It would be over in literally in 10 days. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to go that route. So we're working with Pakistan and others to extricate ourselves, nor do we want to be policemen, because basically we're policemen right now. And we're not supposed to be policemen. We've been there, we've been there. We've been there for 19 years in Afghanistan. It's ridiculous. And I think Pakistan helps us with that, uh, because we don't want to stay as policemen. But if we wanted to, we could win that war. Well, یہ وہ گفتگو ہے جو صدر ڈانلڈ ٹرمپ اور وزیراعظم پاکستان عمران خان نے ون ان ون ملاقات شروع ہونے سے پہلے میڈیا کے نمائندوں سے کی تھی Pakistan. Pakistani army has uh, fought war against terror and it has fought uh, definitely sacrifices in protecting Pakistan Afghanistan border as well. But Pakistan's sincerity was always doubted. Coalition support fund was suspended by the U.S. Defense Department. So at this time when Pakistan economy is facing great trouble, are you going to restore any package for Pakistan? So or we are going to. That's right. We were paying 1.3 billion to Pakistan as aid, uh, working up for many years. The problem was Pakistan. This is before you. Pakistan was not doing anything for us. They were uh, really, I think, subversive. They were going against us. And uh, this is something we'll be. Ta I ended that about a year and a half ago. The 1.3 billion dollars. And I, I tell you what, to be honest, I think we have a better relationship with Pakistan right now than we did. امریکی صدر ڈانلڈ ٹرمپ اور وزیراعظم عمران خان کے ساتھ موجود تھے ون آن ون ملاقات سے پہلے میڈیا کے نمائندوں سے گفتگو کر رہے تھے موسیقی The Democrats were devastated by it. They went crazy. They've gone off the deep end. They're not doing anything. They're not doing health care. They're not doing uh, infrastructure. They're not lowering drug prices. I'm lowering drug prices. First time in 53 years that drug prices went down last year. 53 years. And I'm doing that without the help of Congress, which makes it much tougher to do. Because if they worked with us, I could get drug prices down in half. But the Democrats don't seem to care about drug prices. All they care about is a phony investigation where the report was written. It said no collusion. The report was written, and the attorney general, based on the report, was easily able to find there was no obstruction. Uh, there's no nothing. They're wasting their time. Uh, and Robert Mueller, I know he's conflicted. He had 
a lot, there's a lot of conflicts that he's got, including the fact that his best friend is Comey. But he's got conflicts with me, too. He's got big conflicts with me. As you know, he wanted the job of the FBI director. He didn't get it. And we had a business uh, relationship where I said no. And uh, I would say that he wasn't happy that all of a sudden he gets this position. But you know what? He still ruled, and I respect him for it. He still ruled, no collusion, no obstruction. And uh, this thing should have ended a long time ago. This has been going on for two and a half years. And we're never going to allow this to happen to another president again, because most of them wouldn't be able to take it. On top of everything else, we have the strongest economy. We were just discussing this with the Prime Minister. We have the strongest economy that the United States has ever had. We have the highest stock market yesterday, literally. The highest stock market we've ever had on Friday and Thursday. Uh, we've broken the record, I think, 109 times for our highest stock market. But on, I believe, Thursday of last week, we hit the all-time highest in the history of our country. Our country is doing phenomenally well. Unemployment is the lowest in 51 years, soon to be the lowest in history, if it keeps going this way in a short period of time. Black, Hispanic, Asian unemployment, the lowest in history. Women, the lowest in 72 years. Uh, nobody has ever done what we've done. Nobody's done in two and a half years what we've done. The biggest tax cuts in history, the biggest regulation cuts in history, uh, so many things for health care. We got rid of the individual mandate, which was the worst part of Obamacare. And what it going to end up, if we end up winning the House back, we keep the presidency, we should keep the Senate, we should keep the presidency, I would think, easy. When you have the strongest economy in the history of our country, and somebody's going to run against that particular president, even though in this case it's me. In theory, I have a big advantage. I don't know. I'm going to actually ask you. But in theory, I have a big advantage. So a lot of great things are happening. But the Democrats, they don't want to talk about that. They want to stay off the economy subject. Uh, and what they're doing is just hearing after hearing after hearing. It's nonsense, OK? They tried an impeachment vote, and they got slaughtered last week. They got absolutely slaughtered. It was the most ridiculous. I didn't even know, we, know they were going to do it. And I'll tell you, just in finishing, I have a lot of respect for the Democrats, because most, most of them voted against impeachment Mr. last Mr. week. And I have a lot of respect for those Democrats that did that, because they're doing the right thing for the country. No collusion, no obstruction. OK. Yeah, we're talking about it. Uh, Secretary Mnuchin is talking about it. We're having very good talks with the Speaker of the House, with Nancy Pelosi. We're having very good talks with Chuck Schumer, and of course with Mitch McConnell and Kevin. We are, uh, Kevin McCarthy, we are, I think, doing very well on debt. Uh, if you look at debt limit, well, however you want to define that, but we're doing very well on that, and I think we're doing pretty well on a budget. Very important that we take care of our military. Our military was depleted. And in the last uh, two and a half years, we've undepleted it, okay, to put it mildly. We have made it uh, stronger than ever before. We need another big year. So we had 700 billion, we had then 716 billion. And this year, we're gonna be asking for a number slightly larger than that. We're putting our military back into a shape that it's never been in before. New, the best missiles in the world, the best equipment in the world, the best military equipment of all. We're building submarines, the finest. Nobody can even think about competing with what we're building. We're building, uh, as you know, new submarines. We have a new aircraft carrier coming online. It's the largest ship in the world. It's so large that maybe I could even land a plane on top of it, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's a big, it's a big one. President Gerald Ford. Uh, it's a phenomenal, uh, it's a phenomenal ship. So what we're doing, what we're doing is, uh, Incredible things for our country. I might say this uh, about the military equipment. It's all made in the USA. Everything, 100%. It's Mr. all made in the USA, and uh, you know it's one of the reasons our job numbers probably are so good. The lowest unemployment. Yeah. Oh yes. Uh, Mr. President, uh, will you be visiting Pakistan as you describe Pakistan as a great country? So he will be definitely extending your invitation. 
So, uh, would you be visiting Pakistan? Uh, well, I can't say that yet because so far he has not extended me. <laughs> <laughs> and after today's meeting, maybe he won't, but I have a feeling he might. Yes, I'd love to go to Pakistan. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. here from Pakistani News Channel. Abtak. Is there any exact date or time frame of U.S. troops withdrawal yes. is under consideration at your administration? Hello. Are you talking about from Afghanistan? Yes. Yeah, we have already withdrawn quite a few, and uh, we're doing it very slowly, very safely, and we're working with Pakistan and with, as you know, we're negotiating with the Taliban, and we are doing, I think, very well in that regard. Again, it's something that we could do. We could go one of two ways. We could do a number the likes of which they've never seen before and win it very quickly. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that because you're talking about millions of people, and I don't want to do that. And we're working with Pakistan on getting a solution. And I think, I think it's being worked very well. Will there still be troops there? Uh, Mr. Bond, how do you can you respond to this question? Uh, well, I don't know. We're moving a lot of them out. You want them to be gone we've done what we were supposed to do. We've been there for 19 years, and we've acted as policemen, not soldiers. And again, if we wanted to be soldiers, it would be over in 10 days, one week to 10 days, if we wanted to. But I have not chosen that. Why? Why are we? Why would we kill millions of people? It wouldn't be fair. In terms of humanity, it wouldn't be fair. So we're doing very well, and I think that Pakistan is going to be a big help. Yes, Prime Minister Khan. Prime Minister Khan, so how would you like to comment on? What role do you see for India and Afghanistan as Mr. Prime Minister's same question to you? Does India have the will to bring peace in Afghanistan? You see, this is the the closest we've been to a peace deal in Afghanistan. And there in Afghanistan, there is no military solution because as Mr. President says, if you go all out military, there will be millions and millions of people who will die. So there is only one solution. And I feel, and I think we will discuss this, it's the closest we have been to a peace deal. And uh, we hope that uh, uh, in the coming days, we will be able to uh, urge the Taliban to speak to the Afghan government and come to a settlement, a political solution. What the Prime Minister just said is a very big story, and that's 100% true. Uh, we're, we've made a lot of progress over the last couple of weeks, and uh, mm -hmm. Pakistan has helped us with that progress. Uh, but a lot of great things are happening. A lot of things are happening for the United States, and I think a lot of great things are going to be happening for Pakistan, too, under your leadership. Yeah. I really feel like Thank you. Uh, Mr. 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 I think Iran doesn't know where they are. I've been watching and reading a lot of reports, and right now they're a very mixed up country. They don't know whether they're coming or going. Uh, they have tremendous problems economically. Their country's in turmoil. They're having demonstrations all over Iran. Their inflation rate's at 75%. Uh, they have a lot of problems, so. Whatever it is, it is. Uh, I'm just going to sit back and look. Let's see what happens. Well, but I will say they are, doing, they are doing very poorly as a country, and we'll see what happens. Uh, we did actually, because uh, they said no, and uh, you know, a religious country or religious leaders, but they lie a lot. Uh, we did shoot down. Unfortunately, we had to shoot down a drone. Uh, the drone came down. You know how it how it came down with the new technology. It's actually quite amazing. Uh, but uh, we took down one of their drones. Instead of saying, yeah, that happened, they lied. They say it didn't happen. So uh, we have, uh, there's a lot of proof. It's called, uh, take a look at it on the open floor. Just go down there, take your scuba gear and go down there in the open. What are you would do that, you know? But uh, we took down a drone. Uh, I think very importantly, uh, I read a report today about uh, CIA. That's totally a false story. That's another lie. They put out propaganda. They put out lies. I don't think Pakistan would ever do a thing like that, right? <laughs> Pakistan never lies. But Iran does, unfortunately. So uh, let's see what happens with Iran. We are ready for the absolute worst, and we're ready for sense, too. 
So we are very geared up, and uh, it, they, they, are, they are really the number one state of terror in the world. Now, I have to say, they pulled back because they, their money is running very low. The deal that President Obama made was a disaster because it was such a short term. It didn't cover ballistic missiles. And they couldn't see the important sites. Under this, you couldn't inspect the important sites. There were many things wrong. And, of course, they gave $150 billion plus $1.8 billion in green, green, beautiful cash. That's called many plane loads of cash. I think Pakistan yeah. would like to have some of that cash. But they gave $1.8 billion in cash, which is unthinkable. And instead of being respectful and thankful, which, frankly, they should have been to the United States and to President Obama for making that ridiculous deal. Instead of being respectful, uh, they put their finger up in the air and this finger, the thumb. They put their finger up in the air and they disrespected the United States. They shouldn't have done that. That was a big mistake. And one of the best things they've done is terminate that ridiculous deal. If they want to make a deal, it's, it's, frankly, it's getting harder for me to want to make a deal with Iran because they behave very badly. They're saying bad things. And I'll tell you, it could go either way, very easily. Very easily. And I'm OK either way it goes. Mr. President, <laughs> Kashmir is the flashpoint between India and Pakistan. Are you from Pakistan? Yeah, I'm from Pakistan. I want to cover up Pakistan. I like, them, I like them much better than our own. On the question, uh, uh, magnitude news, Kuram uh, Shadab. Uh, question is, uh, what do you think Pakistan could not do in 18 years? And uh, you have so much hope now that it could deliver. What are those things that Pakistan could do? You mean what now? they didn't do? To they could do in 18 years. They well, I don't, think Pakistan, I, don't, I don't think Pakistan uh, respected the United States. I don't think Pakistan respected its presidents. And I think Pakistan could have done a lot. I think Pakistan could do a tremendous amount against, uh, with respect to Afghanistan. They didn't do it, and I don't blame them because they were dealing with the wrong president. Who knows? But I think Pakistan could have done, they're helping us a lot now. I think they could have helped us a lot in the past, but it doesn't matter. We have a new leader who's going to be a great leader in Pakistan. And uh, we have a new leader here, sort of new, two and a half years now, getting to be three years, can you believe it? You're going to find time flies. But no, I think Pakistan could have done a lot, but they chose not to. That's because they did not respect U.S. leadership. Well, I'll let you know that uh, very quickly. I'll yes. let you know. I mean, I'm going to know soon. It's not going to be like a long-term thing. I, f I figured things out very quickly. So uh, the question was, that's probably the best question you've asked in a while. As I was asking Mueller, Mueller, Mueller. <laughs> Mr. Mr. President. Mr. Mr. President. 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 Mr. امریکی صدر ڈانلڈ ٹرمپ اور وزیراعظم عمران خان کی یہ انتہائی اہم پریس کانفرنس پوری دنیا میں دیکھی جا رہی ہے بین الاقوامی تنازات کے حل کے لیے ان کا اتفاق اور یہ جاری ہے وزیراعظم عمران خان اور امریکی صدر ڈانل ٹرمپ میڈیا نمائندگان سے بات کر رہے ہیں یہاں جو اہم ترین خبر وہ یہی ہے کہ امریکی صدر ڈانلڈ ٹرمپ نے مسئلہ کشمیر کے حل میں سالسی کی پیشکش کر دی ہے ساتھ ہی ساتھ انہوں نے یہ کہا ہے کہ پاکستان ایک عظیم ملک ہے اور عمران خان انتہائی مقبول شخصیت ہیں اور خاص طور پر انہوں نے جب اس بات کا اظہار کی
I think that President Xi, I, I hope that President Xi will do the right thing, but it has been going on a long time, there's no question. <laughs> अमरीकी सदर का कहना था कि पिछले दो हफ्ते में अफगानिस्तान के मामले में बड़ी पेशरफ्त हुई है और पाकिस्तान का किरदार है मिस्टर मिस्टर प्रेसिडेंट बेड गुड रिमार्क्स अबाउट पाकिस्तान एंड सेड दैट पाकिस्तान कैन हेल्प लॉट टू एंड द वायलेंस इन अफगानिस्तान द डायलॉग प्रोसेस एंड